This week on The Corner, we're going to look at the best community-made cooling system for your 3D printer. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Corner. It's me, Jeff, and this time around, I was actually going to do a video on my Tronxy, but it ended up being a video on the Aquila. So let's talk about that for a second. So I have my two Tronxies. I've been doing a lot of work here, um, actually with the stock firmware for the Tronxy. Um, and I'm getting some really good prints and stuff like that. And I'm going to share that with you in a future video. But one of the things I noticed with the Tronxy, and this is my redone Tronxy here with the uh, SKR 1.4 board in it, is there's a bit of a cooling issue. So I was searching and searching and searching and I was looking for a solution to the cooling issues on the Tronxy. And lo and behold, I found the STL for this, which is the Hero, what is it? Hero Gen 5? Hero Me Gen 5 um, parts cooling system. Now this is a fantastic system. So the Hero Me Gen 5 Master Suite is your all-in-one cooling system. It has several different models of printers, different fan configurations, as well as different hot end configurations and different ABL configurations. As a matter of fact, it claims to have over 3 million different combinations. I'll provide you a link for Thingiverse in the description, but this is a fantastic, fantastic invention, which is just great. So what we're going to do is we're going to go through the uh, information that's in this manual here, and I'm going to look up what I need for my VoxLab Aquila with my current configuration with, for the uh, VoxLab OEM surface with um, a Gen 4 style base on top of that. And I have a 5015 blower fan. I have one of them, so I'm going to use a dual duct on that. I also have the BL Touch, so I'm going to go with the um, standard mount for that as well. Just all the basic stuff in order to get myself running. I'm also going to be printing this in PETG because um, I'm actually starting to like printing PETG on my Vox Lab. So that's going to be the profile I'm going to be using. I'm also going to be doing a 0.24 layer um, draft mode. Um, it seems to work quite well, and I believe I'm going for 40% infill. Make it nice and strong. I'm also going to have supports on the surface only. Now that I finished printing, it looks like they came out very good. I am just going to remove them from my build plate. I actually flip my build plate over so I have the glass size, and I use uh, my liquid um, stick them <laughs> in order to um, have the separation barrier so I don't do any damage but as you can see it does stick quite well so I'll just be removing these parts and then I'll be cleaning them up for post-processing. So test fit and assembly but um, printed with um, 0.25 layer height or 2.24 layer height not too bad. Um, came out good for PETG. Um, as I say, well, test assemble. So all the parts seem to fit properly with the test assemble. And then your BL touch mount. This piece goes here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you the assembly from the point of actually having the fan shroud and the fans removed. Now I have a video, I'll link it down below, that goes through those steps. There's a few others online, but basically you want to get to the point where you, your carriage is clear and you're just removing your hot end. So that's what I'm doing right here. And then once we remove the hot end, it will be on to the next step of assembling the new parts. Okay, now that you've removed your hot end, here's your bracket for your base plate. Now, you have a couple screws in here, but these for the Vox Lab seem to be better if you don't have the bolts in them, because then it will sit flush. If you put the bolts in them, they won't really sit flush. See how that is nice and flush there? 
So we're not going to put the bolts in there. So what we're going to do is we're going to start assembly right now. So you're going to put these screws in. Now I'm using a little bit longer screws because they seem to be okay with it. Where'd my other one go? There it is. Perfect. All right. Just like that. Your bracket. And you're going to have your screws in there. There should be one, two, three, four. And then three and three on each side. And you're probably going to have to have a screw put in here at some point in time, but we'll deal with that in a minute. So let's just attach all this stuff here. Now notice that your, um, your channel is right there for your wires. So make sure that all slides in there nice and neat. Just like that. And then we're just going to attach these with um, M10s. M310s. And just make sure those are snug. So there you go. So that's that part of the assembly. Now be really careful with the um, your thermostat and your hot end wire. You don't want to break your thermostat wire because uh, you're just looking up for more work then. So then there's two holes on the back here. And those line up with where the old hot end was attached. So we're just going to line those up. Find them line them up and then we're going to screw in the screws for the hot end all right just like that and that is it that is you're gonna need one here and one from the back here so let me just uh snug those bad boys in real quick so we're going to uh, put the uh, screws on the carriage to secure them, but um, just so you know that um, in the documentation it gives you a full list of what size screws you require for this. So you will see me routing around for different screws and stuff like that, um, only because I have a bin of them and I'm just trying to use up what I have. But you might want to uh, read the documentation, keep your original hardware, and just adapt to what you need. Now we're going to reassemble the hot end cooling fan. Uh, make sure your sticker is facing towards your hot end, not out. And uh, I'm using some M3s because I noticed that the uh, the screws that came with it don't fit, or at least the screws I had. I don't remember if they were the original screws or not, but yeah. I'm just using some M312s here to mount the fan, and you just want to make sure it's mounted snugly so it won't wiggle or move or be loose and cause a rattle, and that will just drive you crazy. And now onto the fan shroud assembly. So what we're going to do is this simply clicks in to those channels that you put the bolts on the inside before. But what you're going to need to do is you're going to make sure of the proper height. So what I suggest you do is that you lower your nozzle until it just touches your build plate and then adjust your fan from there. So you want your fans to be blowing on the tip of your nozzle and not on your heating block that would to me I think that would be the proper height and then you can just secure it by um, snugging up the screws on the side but now that I've properly adjusted the nozzle height and the fan height I'm going to um, move the camera to cinch in the screws but you can't see anyways because my hands are there so you're just going to have to trust me oh and you'll see the paper towel I usually leave on my bed. I usually put something on there while I'm working on it just so I don't drop Any anything and it dents it or anything like that or damages the build plate in any way, shape, or form. So, yeah, just basically you're going to snug your, your fan height on and then you're pretty much done as far as this goes. I'm going to hook up my, um, my blower fan and then I should be good. So now with my fan added, as you can see, I'm done now. For a stock build, if you don't have a BL Touch or an auto leveling device, this is it. This is all you need. You're done. This is finished now. You're good to go. And by my guesstimation, it's also lighter than the Stanza Shroud that I was using before, but that's only by my hand weight, so to speak, right? My hand scale. So I have a BL Touch, 
So I'm going to go on to the next step now, which is to install the BL Touch. So I've already attached the BL Touch to the BL Touch mounting bracket, as you can see. Now it's the there's a small bracket that attaches in between the BL Touch L bracket and the modular system of the VoxLab mount. So it's simply, as you can see here, uh, the small piece simply just screws in to the mount with a couple of smaller M3s. I think I used M3-8s in order to secure it. And then what we're going to do is we're going to secure the BL Touch to that. It has a bit of a slide to get it adjusted just right. Um, my original Z offset I think was three and a bit and now it's down to two and a bit so yeah you're gonna have to reset your Z offset once you're done but overall this will work fantastic. Once I have the BL Touch mounted the um, instruction manual gives you where you need to set your BL Touch offset in order for it to work properly with this machine. As I say, it's all documented. You simply look at your, your BL Touch mount, um, which style of mount you have, and which style of bracket you have. And then you're simply going to go into, uh, well, I'm using Alex's firmware, um, so you'll have to go into there and adjust your um, BL Touch positioning with that. And I'll show you how to do that right now. So you control. Advanced Pro. My X offset is minus 43. And my Y is 13. And then we're just going to save everything, right? That's it. We're done. So super quick and certain important thing to note is, you notice how my bracket here, I don't have the back screws attached in the rail. I only have the front ones. That was to give me enough clearance so the fans would clear the screen. So depending on what screen mount you have, you're going to have to look at your clearance to make sure you got everything going okay. So this was my solution. Might just end up modeling a bigger bracket at some point. So yeah, so the Hero Gen 5 has so many possibilities to it, right? So yeah, I'm going to be using this system on the VoxLab, obviously. And by my hand scale, it's actually lighter than the Stanza Shroud that we did. So hopefully that will give you a bit better prints. Actually, I printed a Cali Cat right away as soon as I was done. And it actually looks pretty good with the overhangs and stuff like that. Um, so yeah, like it, it, it completely works. Um, the documentation is fantastic. And I've done the Vox Lab now. Now I'm going to put this sucker here. I'm going to put this on my Tronxy, okay? So... Thanks a lot for watching. You're cruising by the channel. Please hit subscribe or give me a thumbs up if you like this video, if you found it informative, if it helped you. All right. Until next.